here. Okay. Jumpsy CDO was birthed out in the year 2008 when April Jade Bonoano and Loss came to Cagayan de Oro to take up law at Xavier University Ateneo de Cagayan. Aside from being a student, she held several Bible studies in the campus. Jamsi first generation was then born, and these are Harad Salvan, Corina Unat, Rhea Malmis, Dame Sambaan, Sasa Iderango, and Niza May Kapol. Prayer meetings were held every day at 6 a.m. on the campus grounds of Xavier University. The Lord added the number of the saved people daily. With several Bible studies being held, Jamsi, or Jesus in my circle back then, had to look for a place outside the campus to continue to hold gatherings as persecutions were starting to grow. The first Jamsi Center was right in front of Xavier University where Jamsi CDO held its first Sunday service on August 8, 2010. As the church continued to grow, we transferred to another location at Veles Hay Street. Pastor April Jade Bunoan Onlos was officially ordained as pastor of the church by our St. Gentiles Christ Ministries SGCM Senior Pastor on August 4, 2013. In 2014, Pastor April Jade Bunoan Onlos, who was then already a lawyer, married Dr. Pastor Jerry Onlos. Pastor Jerry was ordained as pastor and licensed officiating minister of the church on June 26, 2016. Today, the church is located strategically for accessibility and for the purpose of catering more people at third floor Philinvest building, Vela Street. It also changed its banner and is now known as Jesus in My City Church CDO. Truly, great things start from small beginnings, and with God's faithfulness, Jamsi continues in our thrust of knowing God more and making Him known. Our church history is truly His story, and you're part of it. Let's journey together. You matter.
Vision is to see every transformed life become a committed part of the movement of building Christ centered, spirit empowered, and mission driven churches in every campus, workplace, community, and nation. God placed in us a desire to see people transformed from darkness to light, from brokenness to wholeness. From impure to pure, directionless to purposeful, depressed to joyful, lost to being found, failure to victor, from being a sinner to being a child of God, through the life-transforming gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. As God has transformed them, we envision to see these individuals become not just a part but a committed part of what God is doing through the church. By being a committed part, we mean willingness to sacrifice, persevere, serve, and pay the price of time, resources, strength, and even lives to take an active part in God's movement of building Christ-centered, 
spirit and power and mission-driven churches thriving through discipleship in the different campuses, communities, workplaces, cities, and nations. May gabi sa tanan! A blessed Wednesday to everyone. Indeed, God is good and He is worthy of all our praises. And so may I invite everyone to please stand and let us worship the Lord together. Atong ibayo ang atong mga kamot o atong dayigo ng atong buhi nga Diyos. Ibayo says in Hebrews chapter 13 verse 8 Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever indeed God never changed and he is worthy of all our places he is our creator our Savior our Redeemer and as we continue to sing we ask everyone to sing this song wholeheartedly. And may we sing this song full of joy and full of gladness in our hearts. The heavens declare. 
Savior. Thank you, O oh God, for all the strength that God you have given us, Lord. We want to praise you, Lord God, every day. We want to give you back all the glory and honor. Have your way in our midst, O oh God. In Jesus' name I pray.
Mayong gabi sa tanan. Tonight, we will be discussing about the book of Judges and we will focus on a judge named Gideon. Now, a little bit of um, context uh, about the book of Judges. This is a time when Israel did not yet have a king. Now, during this time, God was their king supposedly and they operated in a government called a theocracy. Theo meaning God and that God was supposedly their leader, their king, and God was ruling over them through their judges. And during this time, the Israelites are now in the land of Canaan. And what happened is that after they were rescued by God from Egypt and the generation that disobeyed God died in the wilderness, the generation that, that remained followed after God, did what was pleasing to him, and they occupied Canaan. Now, after that generation died out, the next generation that followed, or in fact, the next generations that followed, were not loyal to God. They did not keep his promise, and many times they disobeyed God, they broke his commands, they broke his law, and what happened was instead of God blessing them um, in accordance with their covenant with him, um, God had to give them over to their enemies to discipline them so that they would repent of their sins and come to him in humility. And this happened as a cycle. The Israelites would disobey God, rebel, uh, run to idols, and God would discipline them. Because of that, they would repent, humble themselves, and come to God. So they, this happened as a cycle and it went over and over as the years and centuries went by. Now there came a point where the Israelites again did evil in the sight of God. And so the Amalekites were the ones that God used to discipline the Israelites. And they went through so much hardship that they cried out to the Lord for help. And through Gideon, God rescued them. Now, we won't be fo focusing too much on the story of Gideon's victory um, over the enemies as he fought against them, but we'll look at the things that we will learn from his story and from the characters involved in the story, specifically God, the Israelites, and Gideon himself. And so, as we continue with what I will be sharing, our story and our topic is found in Judges 6 to 8. And we will answer the question, what can we learn from the story of Gideon? First, the fallen nature of man. The fallen nature of man. What I mean by this is the weaknesses that we see in matters of the character of the Israelites and the character of Gideon. First, with the Israelites. Judges 6 1 says, The Israelites did evil in the eyes of the Lord, and for seven years he gave them into the hands of the Midianites. Now, what did the Israelites do? They committed idolatry and they rebelled against God. Now, remember, Ang ginoo, nag-establish o covenant sa mga Israelites between him and the Israelites. And he said that if they followed his laws, his requirements, the covenant that he established will be fulfilled and every blessing that is written in the book of the law will be given to the Israelites. Now, if they do not obey, if they... Um, reject him as their God and if they commit idolatry and if they break his laws and commandments, the curses that are written in the law would surely happen to them. And one of those um, consequences is that their enemies will be able to overcome them and defeat them. And this is exactly what happened. So the Israelites were being rebellious. They were rejecting God. And what really astonishes me is the fact that God has been so gracious in the life of the Israelites. From the time 
that they were able to get out of Egypt and God saved them. He was able to defeat their enemies and how he provided for uh, their, their ancestors. The stories that they have heard about God, they mu must have surely believed and known that God was faithful and good to them as a nation. And the problem is that generation after generation, after the judges whom God raised would die and disappear, these people would return to their previous practices and they would reject God once again. When they went through problems, hardships, and trials, they would run to God for help, cry out to Him. But when their life was okay, when everything was smooth, when they were prospering and there were no enemies to defeat, they would easily leave God and reject Him. And this is a very important thing that I see in the life of people. First, in the life of unbelievers. When their life is okay, when they are not going through any trials or hardship, para sa ila, dili importante na mangita sa ginoo. They do not see their need for God. They do not see their need for a relationship with Him. They do not see their need for salvation. And sometimes, gakabantayan nako na ang tao nga dali masyaran about sa gospel, dali muduol sa ginoo, is katong tao na gaagi o hardship, gaagi o trials, gaagi o kalisod. And many times, God often uses suffering so that He may lead people to Him so that we can see that this world, world is not the place that we should be hoping for, but rather we should be hoping for heaven and eternity. And so sometimes that is what it's like in the life of a person who does not believe. Sometimes malid sila padulong sa ginoo, tungod kay gaagi sila o kalisod. But I also see that in the life of a Christian. When our life is okay, when our life uh, has no problems, grabe ang ato ang usay rejection sa ginoo. At dili man siguro ingon nga rejection, pero kanang apathy towards kang God. Wala problema, ah, okay lang. Okay na Lord, dira ra ka. Dili mo serve, dili mo worship, dili mangita sa ginoo. Pero kung galisod na, kung gaagi og problema, kung na ay mga struggles sa finances, kung na ay struggles sa family, kung kung halos wa na yung madaganan. Ayha ra nga muda ganda yun sa Ginoo. And that is often the case and we what happens is that we turn God into a sort of band A. Ayha ra ta mo adto sa Ginoo mo duol sa iyaha kung na ay kalisod o okay, kailangan nato siya. And unfortunately that that is what is happening but that should not be the case. As Christians, those who have a relationship with God, we should not run to God, worship Him, or serve Him only when we need Him. But during times when we are in uh, plenty, where, where we are prospering, that is the time that we should be worshiping God and giving our all and our heart to Him. And I know sometimes the temptation of the world is so great. Kung daghan kay kalipay, ma-focus ta sa kalingaw, sa kalibutan. Malimta nato na ang ato ang heart dapat nakafocus sa ginoo hug sa iyahang kingdom. Sometimes we can be like the Israelites where we are um, taken, uh, taking into or, or attracted by the things of the world which leads us to commit idolatry for our love for the world. So the, the, that is the fallen nature of man. And yes, although we might be saved, because we are still in this body, na ay mga panahon na ang ato ang nature, ang atong weaknesses, ang temptations, atong palibot, madalata. So mo na siya na importante kaayo that we should always be reminded that God should be the focus of our heart and the focus of our life. There should be nothing in our way that leads us to replace God with an idol that we will cradle and love and it will replace God in our life. And so we see, we sometimes see our character in our life in the life of the Israelites. Second, 
And that would be the person nga, may nguna to ang main instrument of God's saving power para sa mga Israelites, is si Gideon. Now, when we look at Gideon, he is one of the persons in the Bible we could call an unlikely hero. Now, why is he an unlikely he hero? The character of Gideon is one that is timid, cowardly, and he lacked faith because of his fear. Kani si Gideon, dili ni siya ang klase nga tao na confident makipag-away. Confident na warrior ko, kaya na ko pindihon ang mga uh, mga kalaban kung gitawag ko ni mo dili na yung character. He's the type of person that is um, timid and he is cowardly. Nganong cowardly man? Kung makita na to siya sa Judges 1 uh, 6:11 I mean, diri ang first time nagi-introduce si Gideon. Iyon diri, the angel of the Lord came and sat down under the oak in Ophra, Ophra that belonged to Joash the Abizrite, where his son Gideon was, thresh, was threshing wheat in a wine press to keep it from the Midianites. Now, it is actually very weird for a person to thresh wheat in a wine press. Una, kung mag-thresh ka og wheat, dapat naa sa isa ka open field or usahay na sa hilltop kay para hangin. As we see in the picture. Kay tungod na nga kung i-thresh ni mong wheat, kung sa ilang ginabuhat, ginabunala nila, ang impurity sa wheat, madala sa hangin, unya matanggal siya from the wheat. So, inana dapat ang method kay para malimpyo o ma, ma-cure kibali ang wheat nila. Ang problema, gibuhat ni Gideon, asa siya nag-thresh? Sa wine press. Kung tanawa ni, na, ni mo ang wine press na naa sa picture, lalum na siya. So, nga nung nag-thresh man siya sa wine press? Para di siya makitaan. Kay tungod, ang gipang buhat sa mga Midianites, kaninga panahon, grabe ang pag-raid sa mga Midianites. Kwao nila ang mga pagkaon sa mga uh, Israelites, ilahang pang, ilahang pang kwaon ang ilahang mga food, halos walay mabilin sa ilaha. And syempre, si Gideon, dili siya confident na kaya niya pildihon kung naimukuha sa ilahang mga wheat. So, gibuhat niya, dito siya sa ilalom, sa so wine press, nag-thresh o wheat. At the same time po, na-iverse o na, uh, na-iverse na kabutang nga si Gideon gibuhat niya ni ang pag-thresh sa wine press during the night. Siyempre, kung buntag, posible makita siya or hapon, napay suga. So kung gabi eh, wala gi makakita sa iyaw sa iyang pag-thresh sa wheat. So he was so afraid for his life, even sa pag-thresh sa wheat, siya gusto na masakpan sa mga enemies kay para sa iya delikado. And so we see Gideon, and during this time, the angel of the Lord calls him, and in verse 12 to 15, they have a talk. So yung nang angel, angel of the Lord sa iyahana, when the angel of the Lord appealed, appeared to Gideon, he said, The Lord is with you, mighty warrior. So gitawag niya mighty warrior si Gideon. Now, si Gideon, medyo kanang dili kay siya makatuo sa iya sa ginaingon sa Ginoo ani. Ana siya na pardon me my lord. Kibali mo ra og um sana respectfully kibali. Am um, excuse me kadali la. Ana din siya na Gideon replied, if the lord is with us, why has all this happened to us? Where are all his wonders that our ancestors told us about when they said, did not the lord bring us up out of Egypt? But now the lord has abandoned us and given us into the hand of the meat of Midian. So, kibali na siya nga, kadali lang, gaingon ka na uban, uh, the Lord is with me. Asa man ang ginoo? So, muna yung, yung argument, kibali, asa man ang ginoo, nagakalisod me. Gina-raid ang amu ang mga pagkaon. Gasuffer me as a nation. Asa man ang ginoo, nga giingon nila, na nag-rescue sa amu ang mga kaila out of Egypt. Where is he now? Gi-abandon namin niya. So, pasabot mo na siya faith, that God is with them and will save them. Wala siya hope na i-save sila sa ginoo. Gawin na siya na wala na ang ginoo, gibiyaan na ta. He has abandoned us. He is afraid. He lacks faith because of his fear. And at the same time po, siguro galak siya faith po, kaya di niya gakitan niya, kaya pa sila luwason sa ginoo or luwason pa ba sila. 
Paminaw niya, giabandon na siya sa ginoo. The Lord turned to him and said, Go in the strength that you have and save Israel out of Midian's hand. Am I not sending you? So, ingan pa sa ginoo, lakaw din to. Kung unsa ang kusog na nasa imuha, pasabot, ana, actually sa ginoo na, pahalag week ka, kung unsa na nasa imuha, at to din to. Dili ka kailangan kusgan, dili kailangan daghan, which is actually the story of Gideon. Dili ka kailangan daghan yung kauban, kaysa story ni Gideon, 300 lang ang iyang gidala against thousands of Midianites. And they God gave them victory. So God said, go in the strength that you have. What little strength that is in you, I will send you and I will be with you. Say so reply ni Gideon, pardon me my Lord. Ah, kadali lang. Ano siya? But how can I save Israel? Kung saan man ako pagluwas ni sila nga, my clan is the weakest in Manasseh and I am the least in my family. So para sa iya, ako ang pinaka-weak, pinaka-least pag yun may, nga nung ako, nga nung ako yung gamiton, nga nung ako ang imuhang tawagon. He was timid, he was afraid, and may mo na ako na daily ni siya out of humility, pero kabalog yun siya nga, weak siya. He knows that he cannot do anything against the enemy. Now, this statement of Gideon and this talk with the angel of the Lord uh, gives us a picture of Gideon's weaknesses. And many times, kita pareha punta kang Gideon. Di ba dagan sa toa mo ingon nga, dili mong kumaayo mong storya. Ayaw lang ako ang gamita pang preach. Dili mong kumaayo mang invite. Ayaw lang ko ing na nga mag-share ko sa gospel. Ayaw lang ko ing na nga mag-invite ko mga tao sa church. Kulang man akong ability. Ayaw ko ing na na mag-serve ko sa ministry. Kadali lang. Wait a minute. Pardon. Pardon me. <laughs> Masa ka na itong ginayon, di ba? Pardon me, my Lord. Pero wala ko'y abilidad. Pardon me, but I lack ability. I lack skill. Pardon me, pero dili ko pwede pang tads. Dili ko pwede pang assuring. Dili ko pwede pang PWT. Dili ko pwede pang kids. Dili ko pwede pang kung unsa pang ministry sa church. Dili ko pwede. Kay kulang akong ability. Samot na pang share sa gospel. Kulang akong ability. Usahay atong reason kay ato ang kaugalingon. And yes, while that may be true, namang yun tayo weaknesses. Pero, Whatever it is that we have, it is from the Lord and one way or the other, magamit nato ang atong abilidad para iserve ang ginoo. And that is actually what we see here, ang encouraging words na gihatag sa ginoo para kang Gideon. Go in the strength that you have. Bahalag gamay na imong ability, bahalag list ka, bahalag ikaw ang pinaka-unlikely na person na pwede gamitin sa ginoo. Kung gitawag ka sa Ginoo, kung kabuluka na call na ni God, kung kung kabaluta that Jesus said go and make disciples of all nations, we have no excuse to say that God cannot use us. Because God from the very uh, first uh, generations of people nagamit na siya og mga sinners og mga mga people that are weak. God uses weak people, God uses sinners. Because if He did not use sinners, He would not be able to use anyone at all. God works with what He has and He is able to use us mightily. Tungod kay ang atong victory, ang paggamit na sa ginoo sa ato, dili ga depend sa ato, ga depend sa iya ha. Yes, we need to realize our weaknesses and what we lack. Kailan ka bulutas sa itong weaknesses? Kung sa'y kulang sa ito, ah? That's a way to improve and to be able to to grow better. But dapat din ito gamiton ang atong weaknesses o lack as an excuse that it would be a hindrance na dili na nato sa ligan ang ginoo kung tawagon ta niya. Muingo na dayon ta na kulang man akong ability so pasig di ko magamit sa ginoo. Dili na tinuod. Kulang akong ability, yes, but magamit gihapon ko sa ginoo. What is your excuse? Are you timid? Afraid? Lacking in faith? Lacking in ability? Lacking in strength? So was 
Gideon. Yet that that never stopped God from using him anyway. Our weaknesses should lead us to rely on God and be dependent on him. It should not it should rather make us humble knowing that it is God who will enable us to accomplish what he wills. Second, what can we learn from the story of Gideon? The saving grace of God. So the saving grace of God. Judges 6, 6 to 12 says, Midian so impoverished the Israelites that they cried out to the Lord for help. When the Israelites cried out to the Lord because of Midian, he sent them a prophet who said, This is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says. I brought you up out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. I rescued you from the hand of the Egyptians, and I delivered you from the hand of all your oppressors. I drove them out before you and gave you their land. I said to you, I am the Lord your God. Do not worship the gods of the Amorites in whose land you live, but you have not listened to me. And the next verse says, The angel of the Lord came and sat down under the oak in Ophrah that belonged to Joash the Abizrite, where his son Gideon was threshing wheat in a winepress to keep it from the Midianites. When the angel of the Lord appeared to Gideon, he said, The Lord is with you, mighty warrior. So, during a verse, makita nato ang transition, no? After the Israelites cried out to God, God sends a prophet rebuking the Israelites, but at the same time, the angel of the Lord goes to Gideon so that he may use him to save them. And that amazes me because, yes, the Israelites did evil, and yes, girebuke sila sa ginoo. It's as if, abinila na lagi kasabanta. So, basig di tayo rescue ani. But at the same time, the eye, and it's possible this was happening at the same time, at the same time that God sent a prophet to rebuke them, God was also sending Gideon to save them. And so we see how God has been so gracious. Grabi ang mga Israelites sa ilahang rejection kang God. Again, I told it um, earlier nga ang mga Israelites kanang gusulod sila kang God for a little while. After mawala ang judge, nagarule sa ilaha, mubalik nasa sila sa ilang habits, mu worship na sa dulong idols, and it becomes a cycle. And yet here we see the faithfulness and love of God. And ako niya emphasize ang faithfulness kano man. The reason why ang ginoo dilit niya ginabandon ang Israelites, tungod kay gipromise niya na siya covenant with them that through them the nations will be blessed. Light will be um, spread to the nations, pinaagi sa ila, and what God meant actually is that through them, the gospel will be shared, and through Israel, a Messiah will come. And specifically, about na sa lineage ni Abraham, sa from the Israelites, from, as we look at the story of the Bible, from the house of Judah, specifically from the house of David, and eventually, Jesus Christ, who is the Savior of the world. So, tungod sa purposes ni God, tungod sa iyang covenant po sa ilaha, iyang ginafulfill iyang promise, and nagpakita siya o grace and mercy sa mga Israelites. And in the same way, God also shows the same grace and mercy sa atua as people. Una, when we were not yet saved. We know God's patience for us. The reason why we are here right now, the reason why we are now Christians, the reason why we have assurance of salvation, it is because of God's faithfulness. It is because God used people to share the gospel to each and every one of us. And yes, the Bible says that we are enemies of God. We are like the Israelites who rebel against God every day. Like the Israelites, we run after that which is sinful and wrong in the sight of God. And if you're a person nga dili pa kasi wa ka kayla sa ginoo and wala ka kasabot about sa salvation, the Bible says that we are sinners and that God wants to save us from sin and God is calling us to repent, to turn away from sin and to put our trust in Jesus Christ for salvation. God wants to save us from the dominion of darkness, 
from the oppression of sin and from the hand of Satan. And gayon on dere sa Colossians 1, 13 to 14. For he has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us in the, into the kingdom of the Son he loves, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sin. The salvation that God gives is not just ma rescue ka from your enemies or ma rescue ka from sin. In that salvation, there is also redemption and reconciliation. Pariha sa mga Israelites. God saved them, pero unsa man, giri establish niya ang iyang relationship with them. And when we sin, we as human beings sin against God, our relationship with God was broken. It was thoroughly broken and we were the ones at fault. We are sinners and we live in sin every day. And yet because of God's love and mercy, He saved us from sin through Christ. Pero dili lang natamaan nga giluwas ta niya, gihatagatan niya eternal life. Gi gibalik po sa Ginoo, gi restore po sa Ginoo ang relationship nato sa iyaha, gi reestablish niya o karon nga naato sa Ginoo, our relationship with him is that between a father and a son or a daughter. We from being his creation, from being sinners and rebels, because of the love of God and his mercy in Christ, when we receive Christ as Lord and Savior by believing in him for salvation, ang relationship nato kang God, dili lang ma establish ma improve pagyud. He does not just treat us as, as his creation, he treats us as his children. And like the Israelites, if sa una ang mga Israelites, ila ang chosen people ni God, tungod kay giluwas ni Christ, we are now children of Abraham. We now become the people of God by adoption into sonship through the person sacrifice of Jesus, through the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. And so we see the grace of God that sinners like us who are unworthy, who are his enemies, who live in sin and darkness and who choose to love darkness and sin, we are taken out from that and we are saved and God gives us what we do not deserve. We deserve hell and death, and God gave us life, salvation, and relationship. That is how rich the mercy of God is. And we see that in his relationship with the Israelites. We see that in how he has chosen to save them. We see that how he has chosen to be faithful in spite of what they have done. God is rich in mercy and He is willing to receive all those who come to Him in repentance and faith. In the story of Gideon, in the story of Israelites, of the Israelites, we see God's mercy, His love, and His salvation. So what can we learn again from the story of Gideon? First, we see the fallen nature of man. Second, we see the saving grace of God. And third, lastly, we see the transforming power of God. I, as I mentioned earlier, Gideon was a timid, cowardly, faithless, they were faithless, but a lacking in faith person. Yet, God chose this person so that he may use him to save the Israelites. If I was the one to pick a leader, Si Gideon dili na maapil sa ako ang pilion. He did not have the qualities of a leader. He was not the type of person that you would choose so that he can save a nation against another nation that had strong military might. Dili ni siya pang lead sa mga soldiers. Dili ni pang general si Gideon. And yet, there is something that God is able to do to a person no matter what their weaknesses may be, he is able to transform them into the person that he wants so that he may use them for his purpose. And we see that as God uses Gideon to save the Israelites. In John 6, 12, the angel of the Lord calls Gideon what? A mighty warrior. To which Gideon says, um, God is not with me. Or, ano siya na? Kanang katungibasan na to ganina no, ana si Gideon sa iya na sir. Ngano gayon mong kana si God uban nako nga pamiwan naw niya gibiyaan na sila sa Ginoo. 
So una ka to, gi, gi, gi counter to ni Gideon, ana siya na wala mo nang ginuuban sa ako ah. Kaduha, ana siya na dili mang ko great, dili mang ko warrior, dili mang ko strong. And yet God tells him, the Lord is with you and you are a mighty warrior. And this is a very important thing to note. Why is Gideon a mighty warrior? Or why can he turn into a mighty warrior? Because the Lord is with him. Moto na akong giingon ganina. Unsa giingon sa ginoon sa iya ha? Go into the strength that you have. Verses 14 to 16. And save Israel out of Midian's hand. And it's very important for us to see that God is able to bring about victory in our life and He is able to achieve His purpose even when He is using us in spite of our weaknesses. And we also see, ako personally, nakita ko na ako, nga grabe ang, ang, ang ginoo sa iyang pag-mold sa character and life sa isa katao. And yes, kanang, we are still all a work in progress. Dugay, kasagaran, ang process of God's refinement, dugay ang iyahang change. Pero dagan ng mga tao na akong nakitaan, na grabe ang use sa ginoo para sa ilaha. Pero sa ilahang heart, gaingon sila nga, kanang dili mo ko pwede magamit siguro. Dagan sila doubts. Unyana sila na, well, dili mang ko trained, wala mang ko degree sa pagpastor, and yet, God uses them to pastor a church. There's, there are those who say nga, di ko articulate, dili ko makasturya. And yet, through them, God has won a lot of people to the Lord. We may seem as though we cannot be used by God. And we may feel as if, Dili man siguro na to kaya mabuhat ang purpose ni God kung gitawag ta niya. But again, God has the ability to transform a seemingly insignificant rock and turn it into gold. God is able to turn our weakness into strength. And that is because of the power of the Holy Spirit. God can transform even those who are weak and make them strong. Even pa sa Hebrews 11, 32 to 34. And what more shall I say? I do not have time to tell about Gideon, Barak, Samson, and Jephthah. These are the judges. About David and Samuel and the prophets who through faith conquered kingdoms, administered justice, and gained what was promised. Who shut the mouths of lions, quenched the fury of the flames, and escaped the edge of the sword whose weakness was turned into strength. Unsay gisulat dira? Whose weakness was turned into strength. Ang iyang weakness gihimo o gigamit sa ginoo as strength. And when we look at the story, story of Gideon, God did not achieve victory through Gideon by um, using Gideon to lead a thousand soldiers. Yes, when Gideon went out to the valley to fight against the Midianites, 9,000 of Midianites, ang army ni Gideon, 32,000. Dili pa gito army. Mga tao pa gito nga, gigather lang niya. Unya, di ka sigurado kung train ba to, part pa gito sa army, or kanang naapil-apil lang tungkol sa peer pressure. E na nang ginawa kang Gideon, medyo daghan na kaayo ang imuhang gitawag or dagan na kayo mo as an army. Basig hunaunaon sa tao, natungod sa inyong numbers, sa kay 32,000 man mo, ilang hunaunaon natungod sa inyong kadaga na pili ninyo ang Midianites. Paulia ang mga tao na hadlok. So, yun si Gideon, kinsa dali ang mga nahadlok, uli mo. 20,000 ang niuli sa ilaha. Kaya nang hadlok sila. So, from 32,000, 10,000 na lang nabili. 22,000 ang nihawa. So, gibiyaan sila, kay nahadlok sila. So, pasabot ato nga, kato sila, dili to ready for battle, dili to mga warriors. Now, ano si God? Medyo tagan pag mo. Paan na to? So, naghatag siya conditions, kung kani sila mo nilang buhaton, mo na sila ang pilia. And gikan ato ng mga tao, 300 na lang ang nabili. 
Mabitaw na namoto ang ang story about the 300 men, Gideon and his 300. And when God called him to battle, nagduwa-duwa si Gideon. Unya gusto niya masigurado gyud nga padaugon siya sa Ginoo. So yang gibuhat, nag leave siya flee sa ground, ug ana siya na Lord ipasigurado daw bay nga ako gyud ang madaog gyud ko. So no makita nato sa story na grabe ang doubt ni Gideon gihapon even though gi assure na siya sa Ginoo by his word. So ana siya na kung mahi kung uh, basa pagkabuntag ang kanang flee pero dry ang ground pasabot ani nga uh, imo jud kong ipadaog. Nahitabo kung unsa yang gi-request pero nag-request na siya sa utro. Lord, kanang kontinuod gyud nga imo kong uh, ipadaog um unta na basa na sa pagkaugma basa ang ground pero dry ang fleece and nahitabo gyud so i had a siya na assure and kasagaran usahi na na ato ang way no nga gusto ta makakita og sign gikan sa Ginoo nga kanang pinaagi na ani nga damgo pinaagi ani nga sign pinaagi ani nga miracle ma ma assure ko nga padaugod ko sa Ginoo ang hatagan kong victory pero ang gibuhat ni Gideon dapat dili to nato sundon nga naman what Gideon did was actually testing the Lord. And the Bible says, do not test the Lord your God. Yes, gipasailo siya sa ginawa ato, gialaw siya, gipakita sa iyaha, pero it is not a wise thing to do. Because what Gideon did was actually uh, a proof of his doubt of the words of God. Giassure na siya sa ginawa, gihataga na siya word, nag-doubt gihapon siya. So makita niya po na to ang weaknesses ni Gideon ani. Pero a uh, good thing, after ani, Si, ang ginoo mismo, gipas, gisend niya si Gideon dito sa mga kontra. Iyon siya na, at to sa imo mga kontra, paminawa on sa ginaingon sa mga soldiers. Kunyan na ang isa ka soldier nga kontra, na nakadamgo daw siya, nga nagdamgo ko na naata sa camp na to, na ay isa ka loaf of bread na ni false atong camp and gidis, na-destroy ang camp. So ana sila na, si Gideon siguro ni. And after ay ana, gihatagan og confidence si Gideon. Now, what happened was that after that, they planned out uh, a surprise na kibali attempt wherein naglight sila torches, nagdala sila og jars, and trumpets. Motong yan strategy. Pag sound din sa trumpet, and this was during the evening, gibuak nila dungan ang mga jars na kanang nagpanik ang mga Midianites and ang nahitabo, yun sa Bible, God um, set the Midianites against themselves. So, ang naitabo ang Midianites, nagpinatyana sila, and napilde ilang mga forces by their own hands. Walay gibuhat si Gideon. And because of that sight, si Gideon, actually, he became courageous and he was able to fight against the en enemies. He chased down their leaders, he caught them, and defeated them. And what's amazing is that after that, all the days of Gideon, I think it was 20 years, the people were led to the Lord and they followed the Lord because Gideon led them to God and uh, made sure that they obeyed God and followed Him. So from, from a person who was timid, afraid, and couldn't fight, he became a man that was brave enough to obey God, to, to follow what God commanded, brave enough to chase after the enemies, uh, the, the Midianites and brave enough to become a leader and to lead people to follow God. God is able to transform even the weakest of us so that we may become strong, powerful, and we will be able to do what God commands. All we need to do is what? Submit our life to Him. Yes, we are weak. Yes, we do not have enough strength. Yes, we falter and fall. Pero atong ginasaligan, dili atong kawaling. There are no, matupay sa isa ka preacher, yung ingon na, there are no great mighty men of God. There are only weak sinful men that have a great God. Ang ginoo, siya ang great. Dili kita. Ang ginoo, siya ang makatransform, siya ang mugi mo victory, siya ang mustrenten, siya ang musay. Trust in the Lord, put your faith in Him, and if God calls us to do 
His purpose and His will. Follow and obey Him. And He will give you victory through His power. So what is your breakthrough word? Send it to your mentor for accountability. So for our prayer points, let us pray for the things na atong makitan on screen. First, let us pray for our church leaders, Pastors Jerry and Pastor Jade, Pastor Bilang, and the pastors of Jamsi and SGCM. So mga pastors to sa SGCM na atay, actually taganatang churches no, sa Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao. And we really see God's movement sa pag-use niya sa atua para ma-plant ang mga churches and ma-share ang gospel. So let's also pray for the ministry heads and disciples. Let's pray for wisdom, strength, protection, good health. Let's pray for sensitivity to God's voice, vision for the church from the Lord. So let's pray. Lord, akong ginalift up sa imuha ang among mga pastors church. First of all, Lord, sila Kuya Jerry at Jade, we pray for your protection sa ilaha. Keep them healthy and strong. Keep them away from any kind of sickness. Protect tayo sila, Lord. Um, I pray for your provision sa ilahas, sa tanan nila pangailangan, at sa tanan nila pumayroon Bless them, God, and I pray that they would prosper. Help them that they may uh, lead the church and that they may be able to follow you in your will for them. Sila Pastor Bilang, um, silang Lloyd, silang Nerl, silang Kini, si Niza, um, si JP, and all the other pastors sa different churches of SGCM all around Philippines. Lord, we pray na mo prosper ang ilang ginabuhat. We pray that they might have the wisdom to know where you want them to go and what you want them to do. God, may they have vision that comes from you. May they be rooted on your word. May they have their foundation in you. May they love you with all their hearts. May you keep them away from sin and temptation. I pray, Lord, na tabangan ni mo sila to live with joy na God ang ministry dili mahimong burden pero ilang hearts dedicated to you I pray that we will stand as leaders if you call us to be leaders I pray that we will do it excellently and that we will take care of the people na imong gi-assign sa amuha to lead and to care for give us strength give us peace give us wisdom and may we glorify Christ with the things that we do let us also pray for our church una tong different daughter churches gakakita na to na Gadaghan na ang atong daughter churches all around sa Mindanao and specifically sa Kamigen and Bukidnon na mga areas and God is bringing us there. So let's pray for quality members, for true disciples na committed yun o ganaan sa gino. Dili lang na daghan, daghan ta. Yes, we want numbers but at the same time, we want heart na naagyo'y kasing-kasing para sa ginoo ang mga people na mo-join sa Jamsi, people who want to share the gospel, people who commit to Christ and follow and obey Him. So, spiritual growth and maturity o victory in our church planting. So, let us pray. Lord, I lift up to you all the daughter churches of Jamsi and we pray, God, na ikaw ang mo tabang sa mga pastors that they may stand for you and they may follow and obey you. We pray that the members will grow spiritually that God ang ilang kasing-kasing kay committed para sa imo ha nakatong mga magpabaptize all of them will commit to the Lord will go to church will uh, join a discipleship group and that they will also follow in obedience in sharing the gospel and be disciples of Jesus help us Lord that we may be faithful that we may be true that we may follow and obey you I pray na ang among church plan will be victorious and will be prosperous and God, more and more people will be drawn to you and you will use us as a, as a church para daghan tao makaila sa inyo. God, we want the name of Christ to be spread throughout the nation so that people will turn to Him and be saved, especially Lord, as we know that the coming of Christ is near. Help us to be strong, help us to grow more, help us to love your word and help us, Lord, to continually nourish our relationship with you. Enable us, Lord, that we may love one another, and I pray in strengthen ang amuang relationship, strengthen ang spiritual life, in strengthen ang commitment para sa Lastly, let us pray for the city and country. God, akong ginalift up sa imua ang amuang city, among nation. Lord, karon na may nanay mga rollout of antivirus for COVID-19. I pray na ang vaccine kay mahimog effective yod and I pray God na kami tanan na ma-vaccinate na me 
I pray that kanang kung unsa man ang mga bag na mga variants nag rise up, dili na siya mahimog threat sa nation, but God may extinguish ni siya. We pray for your favor, we pray for your mercy, we pray for your protection. We pray na hinay-hinay mo dwindle ang amount of people that are infected by the virus. Help help the citizens to be more responsible, to obey the government, to follow and be and submit to what is being told. We pray, Lord, na more than anything else, may righteousness exalt this nation. I pray na mga leaders, ang president, ang mga senators, ang mga governors, who submit sila sa authority ni mo, that God, they will not pass out bills that are ungodly, but that, Lord, ilahang i, i, i uyon ang mga balaod nilang buhaton in accordance with your word na nasa Bible. We pray that we as churches will be a light to this nation, that we will share the gospel, that we will stand for the faith, and that God, all the more we will be united, we will not fight one another, but that we will do that which pleases you. May we work together, may the name of Jesus be spread in this nation, and may we be a light. Lord, we pray for your strength, we pray for your protection, we give you the glory and the honor. This we ask in Jesus' name.